Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. If you are watching this video, it means it's that time again. Yep, I'm sorry, but it's test time. But don't worry, I'm back again to highlight some of the main concepts that you need to know before taking that dreaded Unit 2 test. Now, before we start, I do want to point out that this video is not going to teach you all the concepts in this unit. Instead, what I'm going to do is highlight how concepts may appear on your test. Throughout this video, I will show you different test questions, talk about things to expect on your test, and explain different tips and tricks that you can use. If you do need more help reviewing all of the different content, make sure to check out then my Unit 2 summary video, my Discord server, or the Ultimate Review Packet. All right, to start, you need to make sure you spend some time studying the demographic transition model. And I can't stress enough how important this model is in this course. As you go through human geography, you will notice that this model continues to pop up. And if I had to guess, I would say there's about a 100% chance that this model will appear on your test in some way, shape, or form. Remember, this model is more than just birth rates, death rates, and growth rates. This model gives us insight into migration patterns, agricultural production, urbanization, economic opportunities, women's rights, cultural traditions, political systems, and economic development. Now, sometimes you might just see a straightforward question about this model, such as asking you to identify a characteristic of one of the stages, but you also might see a more difficult question as well, such as one that has you apply your knowledge to data. For instance, using the data provided, determine which of the following statements most accurately describes the demographic patterns of Canada, Sweden, and Australia. Now you probably noticed that when looking at the question and the answers, there's a lot going on with this question, and that's something I want you to be ready for before you take your test. To be able to fully break this question down, you need to know about the dependency ratios, migration patterns, densities, and have an understanding of the demographic transition model. This is something that you will probably see in Unit 2. All of the concepts that you've learned about in this unit connect and build off of one another. So oftentimes, test questions connect them. Okay, so let's break this question down. And by the way, if you do need more time to answer the question, just pause the video. So right away, we can cross A off. What I want you to notice is that A is saying each country most likely has a higher birth rate. This we can deduce is most likely false since the average life expectancy is high. Remember, as countries advance in the demographic transition model, the birth rate goes down and the life expectancy goes up. Now, B is a little trickier. We know that people often migrate from rural areas to urban areas in search of economic opportunities. However, we can also cross B off since it says citizens are mainly migrating from rural areas to urban areas. Remember, generally speaking, as economic development occurs and countries progress in the demographic transition model, we continue to see more counter-urbanization occur, while countries that are less economically developed tend to have migration mainly focused around urbanization or international migration. Up next is answer C, which does not have information stated in the data to support the answer. Remember, the agricultural density is the amount of farmers divided by the total amount of arable land. And actually, since this question referenced agricultural density, I do want to remind you to definitely make sure you spend some time reviewing the different types of densities. Remember, there's physiological, arithmetic, and agricultural. And when you're doing that, don't just focus on memorizing the formula. You need to understand what the data means and how we can use the data to make inferences and decisions about and for a society. If you do need help practicing interpreting the data and answering complex questions on the different densities, you can check out the practice quiz in my ultimate review packet. And when you're done going through the quiz, you can watch me take the quiz and explain why each answer is right or wrong. That way you can make sure that you have a full understanding of all of the different densities. All right, now finishing up this demographic transition model question, we can see that D does sound right. Countries that are in stage four of the demographic transition model would have a higher life expectancy for both men and women. And as life expectancy goes up, we generally do see that the dependency ratio increases as well. But just to be safe, we always need to read every answer. So don't forget to check out E, which in this case we can see would not be the best answer. We do not have data on the crude death rate and the elderly dependency ratio would most likely be increasing, not decreasing. Now you might also see demographic transition model questions ask you to identify characteristics of a country in a particular stage of the model. 
ask about what would cause a country to shift between different stages, or ask about a particular challenge a country may face in a stage, or possibly even ask about causes of death, which would connect the demographic transition model to the epidemiologic transition model. So what I'm saying is just be prepared to see this model presented on your test in a variety of different ways. All right, now the next concept that I'm sure you will see on your test is population pyramids. And the big thing here that I want you to focus on is being able to read, interpret, and make inferences about countries based on their pyramids. Remember, a population pyramid is a snapshot in time. It gives us insight into the past, present, and future of a society. Be ready to answer questions that have you look at a pyramid and identify possible challenges or risks to the country in the future. Also make sure that you can understand how to connect data in a pyramid to the sex ratio, the child dependency ratio, elderly dependency ratio, and demographic transition model. Oh, and don't be surprised if you see a population pyramid on your test that you have never seen before. Just remember the skills that you practiced in your course and reviewed with me online. You can use them to break down any pyramid. Now, I don't have time in this video to do the deep dive to fully cover population pyramids, but I did create a short video that goes over five tips and tricks that will help you rock any population pyramid test question. I also created a practice quiz that has you look at different population pyramids from around the world and practice answering different test questions on each of the different pyramids. Plus, as an added bonus, if you are still struggling with population pyramids and need even more help, I created a 50-minute video of me going through different population pyramid test questions, where I break down each pyramid and walk you through my entire thought process for all of the different questions. All of these can be found in my ultimate review package. Just click the link in the description down below once you're done with the video. Okay, so the next thing that I think you will for sure see on your test is questions about the different types of migration. Now, the key here is not to mix up the different types. Remember, there is two categories of migration, forced and voluntary. Forced migration includes slavery, refugees, internally displaced persons, and asylum seekers. And types of voluntary migration include transnational, transhumans, internal, chain, step, guest worker, and rule to urban. Now, when it comes to migration, be careful when reading test questions. I often found that my own students would mix up refugee and IDP, and would also mix up intra-regional migration and inter-regional migration. And this brings me to a really important tip. When studying, try to think of terms or concepts that might be paired together on a quiz or test. Oftentimes, you'll see certain terms and concepts always together on assessments. For instance, I know for me, if I'm asking my students a question about intra-regional migration, I'm going to have one or more of the answers be for inter-regional migration. Or if I have a question about pronatalism, you can bet that I will also have one answer be about antinatalism. Understanding which terms might be paired together can help you remain vigilant on your test. If you know that refugee and IDP are often paired together, you'll think twice before rushing through a question on one of those terms and be on the lookout for any answers that might mislead you. All right, now you probably could have already guessed this, but I do have more resources if you need more help with the different types of migration. If you want, you could check out my five things to remember about migration video. And when you're done, you could take the migration practice quiz. Both of these resources can be found exclusively in my ultimate review packet. I realize I keep referencing these resources and it's because honestly, the best thing you can do to rock your test is practice. The more active you are in your learning and the more you practice, the better you will do on your tests. That's why I made so many extra resources to help support you and my own students and why I made the test pack, which has FRQs and multiple choice test questions for each unit of AP Human Geography. All right, so those were the top three concepts that I think you will see on your test. Now comes the best part of the video, the time for honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is, uh, I'll be honest, a little bit of a cop-out. I'll admit that, but it is vocab which you should study for every unit, just by the way, but hopefully by now you've noticed just how connected all these terms are in this unit. Now, don't go into your test expecting a giant vocab quiz. Be ready to see these terms appear in different questions and answers. Understanding what the vocab in this unit means will be critical for you to be able to answer all of the different questions that that test is gonna throw at you. Here are a couple main terms that I think you'll definitely wanna be familiar with for your test, but don't just study these terms. Make sure you look over the other terms that you learned in class and talk with your teacher to see if there's anything that you're missing. My next honorable mention is trends, patterns, and themes. Make sure you do not forget about them. 
I realize this is a little bit more abstract, but there is a lot of patterns and trends in this unit that overlap, and remembering them can help you break down questions that you might not be familiar with. For instance, generally as economic development occurs, birth rates start to decline, the death rate starts to decline, more people start living in urban areas, the amount of opportunities for women increases, the use of technology for food production goes up, and population densities shift. Understanding some of these general patterns and trends from this unit will definitely help you if you blank on a particular topic or concept on the test. Lastly, don't forget to study Malthus, Neo-Malthusians, and the role of the government in population growth. And of course, talk to your teacher and look over your notes. See what you focused on in your class and what concepts you spent the most time with. All right, geographers, that's it for today. Make sure to let me know after your test what concepts were on it and if I got anything right. Also, too, remember, if you do need help studying, you can watch my Unit 2 review video on YouTube or join my Discord server for free today and review with the over 20,000 students around the country already in the server. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.